Hello, my sinfully sweet, most decadent, amazingly flavored, gourmet desserts in the world. How are you tonight? I am doing great. I am, I am just so happy tonight. I have talked to some of the nicest people and I have received some of the most beautiful donations. I'm putting together a thank you clip for the, the things I've received in September. And I want to find out who sent me this little set of Amsterdam acrylic paints that was on my wish list because there was no name in it. And I need to thank you properly. So please, if you see this video, leave your name below or email me artbytammy at yahoo.com so I can give you the proper loving that you deserve in my video that I make saying thank you. Whoa, let me not destroy the place here. So anyway, tonight we're going to do something fun. Don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. We are going to do dueling strainers. That's right. These two strainers are going to battle. And we're going to see what kind of designs we can get out of them. And if it even works. <laughs> so before we get started, I am working on my Loli Vefe mat. And... I am loving this thing. I gave it a nice cleaning today. It's very simple. I peeled the, the skins off of it. I literally put it in my tub and rinsed it off. Everything came off. I dried it. The things you're seeing on it that look like they're on it are actually on the table. You can see through this mat. Absolutely love it. But somebody asked me a question regarding skins and whether or not resin skins come off and let me tell you my friends resin comes off the best out of the skins here are two here that i peeled off i kept these to show you because i swear that looks just like a feather and then if you look at this one i swear i'm seeing a peacock like this is the beak and the head and that's the little feathers sticking out isn't that cool? So I had told you, you know, you can use these skins for things. You can make jewelry, which we are going to do. But I also told you, you can use them in your artwork. Here is one way I used my resin skins once. And there is a video on this. I will link it above. It was a collaboration piece that I did. And I titled it Rebirth. So you can see here these colorful areas were actually skins from my table that I saved. And I created some bubbles and that's crackle paste and it's stained. This was a lot of work. And there's a special story behind this. So if you haven't seen this video, please go watch it. And uh, But that's just one way you can use these. Now, how do you attach them? This was wood. I literally glued them down first with some heavy matte gel. Um, not sure if regular glue would be enough for that, but you could try it. Now, if those are acrylic skins, you could do the same thing. Just glue them on there and then do some resin work over the top. So back to what we're doing tonight. We will do, a, I'll do a video on the jewelry this upcoming week. I promise you that. I'm just going to collect a few more skins, so I'm happy with what I have to work with. The resin skins are a little bit harder. If you cut them right after it's cured, it's a little uh, easier to cut. But I don't use the resin skins for jewelry. I'll use them for a piece if I, if I want to use them. So anyway, back to dueling strainers. So this I got at the dollar store. This I got at Walmart. I was smelling lemon everywhere. I thought I was going nuts. Little did I know the dollar store... Dollar Tree strainer is lemon scented. It had a little thingy in the center with a black plastic thing to clog up the sink. I ripped that out because I wanted to sit flat on the canvas, just like this one. 
The colors we are using tonight are primary elements. If you have never used them before, primary elements are a dry paint system. They come in a powder form and you mix them with this product called Polypore. These products are sold by Color Art. I have a coupon for 25% off, no minimum order. It's listed in the box below. They sell these, they sell resin art. These colors are beautiful. So the way this works is however much paint you want to make is how much of this that you use. So here these are, I believe, two ounce cups. I filled them up halfway with polypore. I don't want to mix it because I don't want to use this. Well, you know what? I'll do it just to show you quick and I'll put it away and use it another time. So let's say I want two ounces of cranberry. I would literally fill this to the top because it's a two ounce cup. I'm not gonna go all the way to the top, but close enough. I'm gonna take some of this powder. Now, I use, this is an eighth of a teaspoon. I use two of, one per ounce. So I would use two of these worth of the colorant. Okay. And then you mix it up and you're done. That is your paint. You've just made your own paint. The fun thing about these primary elements is you could blend the colors together, different colors to make your own shades. So they are a lot of fun. Um, the polypore was designed to have the consistency for pouring. So your typical pours, um, if you're trying to do something like a Dutch pour, then you would want to add a little water to thin them out. But as far as the consistency, it's good for your, your average, you know, straight pour or flip cup or swipe, things like that. So there's the color. It's all mixed up and it's ready to go. It's a little bit on the... Uh, it's in between, I would say it's a little bit on the thicker side, but a lot of people pour with a thicker paint like this. I usually want my paints a little bit thinner, so I just add a little bit of water. But it depends on the type of pour you're doing. So that's it. That's how primary elements work. So I'm going to put that to the side. We're going to get that out of there. Now the white that I'm using tonight is this Cinelier Abstract Innovative Acrylic. I got this at Blick. What I did was I combined polypore and this together. I've never done this before. Usually I will mix my white with a pouring medium or with Floetrol. Um, I'm trying it for the first time with this polypore, so I wanna see how it reacts with all of the colors. So that's what I got going on here. I got the white and these colors here, I'm gonna show you really quick cause they're pretty. This is a rich cobalt. Now all of these pigment, all of these paints are a uh, luster. So they have a shine to them. And I'm not sure that it will show on camera, but that is the rich cobalt. This one here, beautiful color, uh, Wine and Roses. Then I have one called Pink Azalea. It's funny, I am not a pink girl, but when it comes to like hot pink in, in the paint field, I just absolutely love it. So that's pink azalea. And then mandarin citrine. Now, the way I need to layer these paints is going to be different because I do not want that yellow color and that deep purple color to get next to each other or I'm going to have mud. So... 
I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a lot of white in between my layers. I want to use the yellow, the blue, put, so that will make green. I want to put a layer of white, and then I want to do the other two colors. Now, these here are couplers, I believe they're called, at Home Depot. They're 30 cents each. I use them for stands for my artwork. They're supposed to be for um, plumbing, but, you know, we're not doing plumbing on this channel. Not yet, anyway. Just make sure you're in there. You're in there. All right, so here we go. Oh, primary elements. They are a very high quality pigment. They are very pigmented. Make sure you wear your gloves because they do stain. Now, my paints do not have silicone in them. Just what you saw me mix on camera just now and a little bit of water. That's it. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put a white line down the middle here. A line of white. Here is the consistency of my white. Pretty close to what the other colors are. So I'm going to pour just kind of like a barrier. Why? I don't know. Just to separate the two strainers. I have a feeling this one is not going to work at all. So what I'm going to do is... I wonder, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start with the blue. And I'm going to just pour around the strainer in a circular motion like this. And I will probably layer them differently. So... that when we tilt it, I really don't think this is gonna work. So that when we tilt it, there's the order of the colors are different. All right, now I want yellow for this one next. So I get some green. But you don't know until you try. You might get some kind of a funky result here. Now I'm going to hit both of them with some white. Some white. Yeah, this one's crazy over here. Oh boy. See, we're going to go south really quick here. It's all in the name of fun. Here, we'll do this here so I don't get confused. And then over here, we'll do some blue. Some yellow. This one's almost like the bottom of a bottle pour. 
which coincidentally, I have never done one, believe it or not. Some white. Then we're going to start over again here with some more blue. Yellow. This is a really crazy pattern right here. Okay. Just a little bit left. I can't remember what I just did here. I think I did blue and yellow. So that would mean right here, we'll finish up the yellow and blue. And then over here, the pink, or pink azalea, I should say. And wine and roses. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly lift these up. Oh, look at those air bubbles. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> It's a different design though. And let's see here. My glove. Wow, those air bubbles are really freaky. Look at that. Those are really creepy looking. Wow. Yeah, let me do something about those. Can't have those in there. Wow, they're so big. They don't want to pop. I'm going to have to uh, pop them myself. Those are really big ones. Plus, once I start stretching them. Wow, it did a crazy little, like, dotted design in the center. That's weird. All right. I am going to pour down some more white around these puddles. And then I'm going to torch really quick some of the smaller bubbles. Okay. 
getting the little ones, those big ones, though. I'm going to have to stretch it first. Those were really, really odd. They almost look like seeds in the middle of a flower. All right, so stretching. Now, this is... I have to pay attention here because... to watch where the design goes so we'll go up that way back down And now I'm going to kind of go in a circular motion, maybe. I'm going to try, oh, it just went off the canvas on me. Hey, this Dollar Tree strainer, the design is not that bad on it. does look like a flower. So I'm just kind of going around and around. Eventually, though, I'm going to come down like this. Come back up. That way, back down. I'm sorry if you guys are getting a glare from the lighting. Unfortunately, there's nothing I could do to avoid that when I am tilting. Kind of pulling this out a little bit. All right, I'm going to go right over that side, that corner, I mean. Nice and fast. Back down. So obviously I lost that entire shape. But again, as I said, I'm not necessarily going for a flower shape. Now, one thing to note about these colors, they tend to dry a little bit darker, but then once you gloss them or, or varnish them or resin them boy do they come back to life all right i'm gonna go up with this now I really like this left side, your right side. That way, come on.
So you can see the green that I got. I didn't add any green. That's from putting the blue and yellow next to each other. So I'm just going to stretch this down this way now. And I'm going to stop with it in about 2.5 seconds. Okay. So I have two corners here that are bald. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a little more white paint. or hopefully get a little more white paint out of this cup to cover them. These little skewers, I have them in my Amazon shop, but you could get them at Home Depot where they sell or wherever they sell Weber grills and their accessories. These are fancy shish kebab skewers that I'm using all right so we have that corner and then we got one right here done. Always make sure you check your edges, which I have a few back here that I need to get. Or something like that. I'll scoop some off of my mat and try to blend it in. I'm not going to use white, only white there. And another thing, too, is when you're doing acrylic or resin, always scoop underneath your ledge. See all that paint that came off? Um, what that does is it pulls your, keeps pulling your surface down, and it interrupts your design. So if you scoop it off a couple of times during the uh, cleanup process here, it will help. Avoid those drips from pulling down your artwork and changing the design too much on you. There's a lot that comes down there. All right. So we got a little bald spot there. We're going to torch really quick and I'll give you a close up. Lots of green. You know what happened here? This is a good learning lesson. When you have big bubbles like this, don't try to torch them. Because you see what happens? You get a little skin on those big bubbles. Because they're so big. So I gotta just kind of pop them. All right, I will do this afterwards. Let me just give it a quick torch now, and then I'll bring you in. You know, it's different, that's for sure. It's not like anything I've created before. Very different.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the light that you're about to see in my painting to my advantage to see if I can get these colors to light up. Just don't mind the air bubbles. So you see those little spots there I have to pick out now? That's from the blend that's in the polypore that... Um, when I hit it with the torch, I singed it. See that goldish greenish color I created by blending those two together. Oh, look at the look at the uh, wine and roses lighting up. You see that? These colors are really, really pretty. You just have to use something with them that's a matte, like a white or either uh, even a tube paint. Um, something to balance them out because there is such a thing as too much shimmer. The center is going to light up like crazy when I add resin to it. So anyway, everyone, thank you so much. For all that you do, all the beautiful comments, all the well wishes, all the love, all the support. It is a blessing to have you in my life. Um, I do have a Facebook group called United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. I run that with my friend Lisa from Lisa Wyatt Art. I have a link in the description if you want to check it out and join. Also, I have all my social media outlets linked down there along with my Etsy shop that I am currently working on. Right now there's just a couple of paintings and some coasters in there, but I'm going to be adding a lot more, so check back often. The links for color art and paper, um, Amazon, all that is in the description below. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, comment. I have some really crazy projects coming up that you're not going to want to miss. And I'm sure one, of, one or two will involve me getting covered in paint because it always goes like that. So I want to wish you all a great night and happy pouring.